everybody, I'm Dr. Francesco Mangano from Italy. My lecture is about digital dentistry, the challenge of numbers. So I will highlight you on the world of numbers in the new field of dentistry, digital dentistry. Digital dentistry, it's all about uh, scan, plan, make and done. So four phases, four different phases. Uh, to, uh, from, from, from the beginning we have uh, the scan phases, we use different devices uh, such as intraoral scanner, face scanners and comping computer tomography. We acquire three-dimensional data of our patients, then we upload this data in co into computer assisted design software. We have different computer assisted design software for the surgery, for the prostodontics, for the orthodontics. Inside this software we can plan, for example, and design, for example, our restoration like crowns and bridges, as well as our surgical guides or aligners. Then we need to fabricate these devices, we need to make them and we use milling units and 3D printers to do that. And then we have the final phase, the clinical application. When talking about the scan phase, we talk about intraoral scanner. We all know how they work. They use a source of light, generally a structural light grid or a laser, and uh, they uh, 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 project this uh, source of light onto the surface of the object to be scanned, and then they capture all the information of the surface of this object uh, through the powerful cameras and uh, the software calculate a coin cloud and then create a, a geometric reconstruction of this surface that is called mesh. A mesh is a series of triangles that connect this uh, point cloud. And it is very important to remember that the mesh is always a geometric approximation of the surface of these objects by means of triangles. So our STL files are reconstruction of the surface of our objects, but they are geometric approximation. And uh, we can have uh, an higher resolution of acquisition. With an higher resolution of acquisition, we have more triangles, so the object appears smoother and perfect. But anyway, it is always a geometric approximation. So a polygonal mesh is an approximation and it is different from a library file, like a NURBS, for example. These files are perfect because they are controlled by points and they are files like the library files from the implant company uh, that we have inside the computer-assisted design software for implant prostodontics, for example. And if we want to see the difference between a polygonal mesh and the NURBS, we see that if we watch it very, uh, very close um, at higher magnification, we see that the polygonal mesh has some vertex, while the nerves, it's almost perfect. We don't have any vertex. It is a perfect reconstruction. This is very important. We have several clinical applications for intraoral scanners. The diagnosis, we can use uh, the model to create a database and we can use intraoral scanner for prostodontics, for guided surgery, for orthodontics, and also we can create a virtual patient. These are a few examples of uh, how the intraoral scanner can be used in our workflow. We can combine this information, information of the teeth and the soft tissues, together with the information on combined computer tomography. We can upload this information into a uh, computer assisted design software and then we can model inside the computer assisted design software. For example, in this case for guided surgery, we create a virtual workshop and then we plan our implants according to the prosthetic information given by the workshop and according to the available bone. So these are the most important things. So we plan our implant position, uh, depth, inclination, and then we can design our surgical guide. We print our surgical guide and we use our surgical guide on patient. We can proceed flatless, minimally invasive in placing our implants. And then we can go on 
after one or two months with the digital prostodontic space by means of the implant scan bodies we capture a scan of the position of these scan bodies we send this information to the lab and the lab can model individual abutment as well as crown and bridges and we have just to apply this restoration and it's done so it's very important how it works this is another important example for example with the guided surgery with air to gate software a very powerful software for guided surgery that give the possibility also to perform immediate loading so also here we have the preoperative situation the combined computer tomography data from an intraoral scan or uh, and and the combined computer tomography are uploaded into the r 2 gate software and here we can make our plan our plan is uh, based on a prosthetic walks-up and then the, uh, the planning of the implants in position, depth, inclination. And we also have valuable tool like this digital eye that gives us information about the quality of the recipient site. So the quality of the bone where we place the implant. And also we can extrude the position of the implant scan body. This is important. This case was provided by my friend uh, Sam Omar. We are making a publication together. And then we can proceed flapless by means of a guide that is generated inside the software, as well as the models and the restorations as well. And uh, it is important to use any ridge implants and uh, guided surgery with this flapless approach. And it is also important to check our implant stability with ESQ and the higher the ESQ values the better it is for the survival and for the success of the implant in the long term and digital eye together with ISQ they give important information in this sense and so we can finalize the case with little or minimal adjustment and the precision is very good the procedure is minimally invasive and we can perform immediate loading. When we talk about intraoral scanner, we see many advantages from this publication in 2017. And the limits, the only two limits that we, we see uh, are the non-sufficient accuracy for long span restoration, such as the full arches, and the difficulty in capturing subgingival margins with natural teeth. Uh, when talking about the first problem, we need to talk about accuracy that is the most important, the key feature of an intraoral scanner. Accuracy is the sum of trueness plus precision, and it is totally different from the resolution of acquisition. We have seen that the resolution of acquisition is the number of triangles. Accuracy is another thing. Accuracy is uh, 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 very important, and it is not exactly the clinical precision, so the fit of our restoration because the fit of our restoration depends by the wall step the wall phases of the workflow not only from the scan but also from the plan also from the make and the clinical application as well so we don't have to confuse the clinical precision of our restoration with the accuracy of the uh, intraoral scanner the accuracy of the intraoral scanner is this one it is the trueness, so the ability of the measurement to match the actual value of the quantity being measured, and the precision, so the consistent in these results. We want a scanner that is highly accurate and also, and so highly true and highly precise. We don't want low trueness and low precision because it will create problem during the workflow. And we need to remember that when we work with implants, we only work with the positional impression. So we capture the position of the implant. We send the information of the scan body, the STL file to the dental lab. And the dental lab replace the, the scan body that is a mesh in this case with a library file that is more similar to a nerves file. It is perfect and uh, over this file that is for example a t-base a titanium base or a, or a titanium link then the dental technician can model the individual hybrid abutment so the dental technician doesn't work directly on a mesh it works on a library file 
So the only important thing is really the accuracy of the impression. And we made this study comparing different intraoral scanner in implanto, uh, implantology and in prostodontics, in implant prostodontics. We compared these different devices, uh, the 3600 from Carestream, the Emerald from Planmaker, the DW10 from Dental Wings, Omnicam from Densply Sirona, and Trios 3 for, from Tree Shape. Uh, in this uh, in vitro study, we designed two uh, models, one representative of two clinical situations, one single crown and one bridge with any rich implants from Megagen. And uh, we screwed uh, the scan bodies over the uh, implant analog in order to take the, the scan with the reference scanner. And the same we did for the second model. The second model was representative of a full arch, so six any rich implants. Scan bodies were screwed on. And then, the, uh, as you can see in this uh, slide, and then the, uh, the two models were captured by means of a very powerful industrial desktop scanner in order to get to capture reference files for both the model. And uh, we uh, saved these reference files and then we used every single intraoral scanner to capture 10 impressions of the different three situations, single crown, bridge, and full arch. The design of the study was so. The scanning strategy was this one, a zigzag strategy, we call it. So from the buccal to the palatal, then occlusal and then buccal going on. The same operator, the same condition. And uh, we superimposed each one of the scan taken with every single intraoral scanner used in this study over the reference file in order to evaluate the trueness. This video show more or less how the process is inside the reverse engineering software. Uh, the process is based on two steps. We need to upload, of course, the two different files, the file from the intraoral scanner and the file from the reference scanner. Then we need to superimpose them and the superimposition takes place first with a raw alignment by means of three, four, six points. Then the uh, best fit algorithm of the software is launched and there is the possibility to uh, superimpose by means of the software algorithm. After this, it is possible to generate a 3D colorimetric map and this map shows us the deviation between the different uh, models, between the different STL files. And this software is capable to detect even differences of one micron. So at the end, this colorimetric map gives us an idea of the deviation, so the error uh, of each uh, uh, different scan taken with the intraoral scanner we decided to set a threshold of 30 microns of error. So you see in green areas at the end of the colorimetric map, you see in green now areas that have an error that is less than 30 microns. It is very important. The same protocol has been used for the bridge and uh, the same protocol has been uh, used for the uh, full arch. So basically it is a mesh to mesh superimposition. This to evaluate the trueness. In order to evaluate the precision, we have superimposed the different scans taken within each scan, within each group, in order to evaluate the consistency of our results. The same for the bridge, as you can see here, and the same for the full arch. So we didn't use the reference scan, we superimposed each other, the different intraoral scans. And uh, these are the results for the uh, trueness for the different uh, intraoral scanner. As you can see, we have a lot of green, so it's a good results, but the best results are for the single crown. And it is normal, the longer the scan, the more it is difficult 
the, the, the i and the r. And here we see the numbers, the results with trueness for the single crown. And it's interesting that the best results were obtained by the Kerstream and the three shape scanner. And it is interesting that the, the, the uh, Kerstream was really true, really accurate with an error of 14 microns in this case, even if the resolution of acquisition, so the number of triangles, was less than the other scanner. This study says that resolution of acquisition is not important in implant prostodontics. It is anyway important when working with natural teeth. These are the best results for the bridge. As you can see, again, very good results, low level of error and very um, good uh, results for the Kerstream and the TRIOS scanner again. And these are the best results for the full arch mesh to mesh superimposition. We have error comprised between 30 and 40 microns for the best scanner. Very good results. This is the table with the mean uh, trueness plus standard deviation. And we see that the best results were achieved by the Kerstream and the three shape scanner with statistically significant differences between the different scanners and statistically significant difference between the different applications. So the best results were obtained for the single crowns. The error increased with the bridge and increased even more with the full arch. This is something that we expect, of course. And uh, this is a, a table and graph that show you how the tendency of the error was in this study. And uh, the precision, as we can see, is very high with all the machine. More or less, all is green. It is important. The results of precision, repeatability were very good. So this scanner really are very stable in the results in almost all the application, as you can see also for the full arch. And this is the table for the final precision. So we can see that we have a high precision for all the scanner, but there are statistically significant differences between the scanner and between the applications. This is again a graph for the precision. And our conclusion, our conclusion are two. The scanner differ in trueness and precision and the better results are in short span restoration and the error increase and the accuracy worsens with the extension of the scan. And it is only an in vitro study with limitation because we use the mesh to mesh approach. And now we have more scanners, new scanners like the prime scan from Densply Sirona, like the, um, the new Itero. We have uh, different scanner that we need to test with a new approach and very soon I will release the new study. Uh, the limits of this study is that it is an in vitro study, but anyway, it gives a lot of information to us. We use artificial intelligence in implant prostodontics using a mathematical approach. This is uh, our uh, approach published. We generally take two scan. The first scan is for uh, uh, the fabrication of the individual hybrid abutment and the crown, provisional restoration. Then after the period of provisionalization, we take a second intraoral scan of the individual hybrid abutment in the mouth intraorally. Then we use the artificial intelligence of the software to replace this mesh with the original uh, library file designed during the plan one phase. And with the artificial intelligence, the dental technician is capable to model over a perfect, on a perfect file, a library file that is much better, as you can see here. So here the first phases, the scan with the scan body, the first plan in the in hybrid abutment, the crown, the application of the hybrid abutment in zirconia and the crown. And then the second scan, that is the scan uh, of the hybrid abutment in position because we use uh, the concept, we follow the concept of one abutment at time. And then as we can see, we have the artificial intelligence helping us. We recall 
automatically the original CAD design of the individual abutment and then automatically the software draw the margin line. The dental attenuation model not on a mesh but over a library file and the margin line is automatically drawn in a perfect way. The technician has only to focus on the tooth shapes and volumes. And the error, we can check the whole error of the process because we can superimpose files. And we see that the error of the process by means of reverse engineering, so the whole process for the fabrication of individual hybrid abutment is always less than 40 microns. So for us, the whole workflow entails an error that is only 40 microns. We are extremely precise clinically. It's very important. And uh, can we scan fully edentulous patients with this powerful scanner? I would say yes, it is possible, at least with four implants. This is our protocol. We, uh, the patient come with a previous uh, old uh, uh, removable denture. We reline this denture intraorally and then we remove this denture very well relined and we scan with the intraoral scanner this denture extraorally. Then we uh, print a replica of this denture with a powerful 3D printer and we uh, discard this replica in the area of the implant scan bodies. And then we take the intraoral impression without and with the scan body, without and with this replica in position. This replica helps us in order to have an accurate scan, in order not to lose references, in order to have the vertical occlusion, the dimension of occlusion. And also we have all the file in the reciprocal correct position and we can proceed with the computer assisted design phases. We can also add information of the face of the patient. We can design this individual tray. It's a reference for the face scanner and we can print it with a 3D printer. It is an individual reference uh, designed in mesh mixer. And then we use Obi scanner. There is a powerful face scanner for dentistry in order to capture two face scan of the patient with and without the reference. And uh, we can send all this information to the dental technician. The dental technician superimpose the different files and can model the final bar for the overdenture having all the available information, all the file in the correct position, including the face of the patient in 3D. So the technician can model the bar and we can print a replica of this bar in order to check the fit, the passive fit in the mouth. If the passive fit is perfect, then we can go on with the final uh, bar. We can mill this bar in a uh, pick and it is uh, really an interesting procedure because the material is extremely suitable for this application. And this is what we have uh, at the end, the trial of the, the overdenture is still made conventionally. Uh, at the end everything worked very well and we posed the basis to go to the digital denture, the complete digital denture. And this is the one year follow up control. The bar is there, but you don't see it because it is in peak. Another case, the concept is the same. You can do the maxilla and also the mandible. It is not a problem. Uh, the protocol is always the same. It is extremely reliable and the dental technician is very happy to have the opportunity to model the bar uh, with all the information, including the face of the patient. We print or mill a replica and then we can, after the passive fit is checked, we can go on with the final bar. And uh, the same will work perfectly also in the mandible. It is not a problem, even if it is a little bit more difficult, but the results is guaranteed. Once again, we can print a train and if the train is good, we can proceed with the final milled bar and this is the control at one year after the application. This is the study that we published about it. And uh, uh, we use a lot of 3D printer, but are they accurate enough? We made a study in order to verify it. And uh, there are two main techniques 
actually in the dental market SLA stereolithography uh, use a laser and DLP uh, use uh, digital light processing use a light projector these techniques are very important and uh, uh, they, they are the main technique in the dental market as you uh, can see here the SLA technology is based on a laser beam that is projected onto the resin polymerization tank directed towards the tank uh, through mirrors and lenses so we have a laser uh, beam uh, with DLP, with digital light processing, we have uh, a, a panel uh, uh, of light, uh, structured light, that is directed to the tank uh, through uh, the digital micro mirror devices, that is the unit of this uh, technology. And uh, both these technologies are very promising in terms of resolution and, of course, accuracy. We need to remember the resolution is not accuracy anyway, because the resolution is only one of the parameters, but then we have to consider a lot of parameters, including the materials used. And the 3D printer at, at the end is a sort of orchestra with a lot of different elements working together. And the most important probably is the software, the harmonizer of the printer. We compared these uh, six uh, devices. Two of them were SLA, the Form 2 and the XFAB 2000. The other were DLP in the technology. We basically designed a parallelepiped on known dimension with three holes of different diameters in the center. And then we printed several samples with the different printer. And we investigated this, the quality, the accuracy of this parallelepiped printed with the different printers by means of precision problem and microscopy, optical microscopy. So it was a long study, it was uh, very difficult to collect all the information. In this video you see how we work it. We probed physically all the different samples in order to acquire data, information. It is important to use these devices. And uh, after all, we see that uh, the linear measurement uh, gave uh, errors that were different between the different printers. And uh, the best results were given, the more stable results uh, were given with the um, stereolithographic printer, at least in terms of linear measurement. So the walls of the different parallelepiped, as you can see, the deviation was less with the stereolithographic uh, 3D printer, so the FormLab and the XFab. But uh, uh, when going to the um, measurement of the holes diameter, the things changed a little bit, particularly for the little diameter, then the very powerful printer um, like the Solflex uh, from the Voco gave the more consistent results. But anyway, the stereolithography printer performed well. We need to consider that uh, uh, the printer are different, the stereolithographic printer are a little bit more slow compared to the DLP because we have a laser moving horizontally and working on the resin, solidifying the resin. The uh, panels are faster, so if you want to produce a lot of models, probably it's better to buy a printer that uses a DLP technology. Anyway, as you can see here, the stereolithographic printer studied in this study, even if very cheap and entry level, they gave excellent results. The study was completed by printing different models. Uh, these models were scanned with a uh, dentate model. This model was scanned with a reference scanner. And uh, these uh, uh, models were then superimposed to the reference uh, model to verify the trueness. After one month, we wanted to investigate the stability of the model after one month to verify if some contraction could or dimensional um, uh, contraction could occur. And, and it is really true after one month there is a, a serious uh, dimensional uh, contraction for the model. So my suggestion is use the model immediately after you bring it there because it is better as you can see here because the general trueness uh, is not so high after a period of time of one month. Let's talk a little bit again of guided surgery. Make 
how to overcome the present limitation of guided implant surgery. We published recently with uh, Maurice Salama and Jafar Moi this paper. This paper is about the new kind of guided implant surgery, the sleeveless guided implant surgery. This is one case, a young patient with a Maryland bridge. Uh, she wanted the restoration with uh, implants and a single crown and uh, it, the, the restoration was planted inside the um, uh, guided surgery software and uh, the surgery proceeded as you can see here with this guide that are metal sintered guide without any sleeve and it is very interesting because it gives the opportunity to the dental uh, um, uh, to the operator to, to, to see very well the surgical field and uh, as you can see there is no sleeves so everything is different it is the end piece that is guided as you can see here and uh, uh, the guide is double we have a complete visibility we don't need to use long surgical drills we can use the standard drills of our kit we don't need to buy any a dedicated surgical kit for guided surgery and we can proceed with all the different implant systems so visibility possibility to irrigate well extreme accuracy are the advantages of this system as you can see here and this is the final result of this case about uh, the making in uh, digital density we can also design and make custom made scaff for bone regeneration this paper published with professor giuseppe luongo is an example there is a non-recoverable tooth that need extraction uh, we can design the custom made scaffold inside the mimic software we have acquired the information with con being computed tomography we can elaborate this information in order to um, uh, uh, create a model of the bone and we can design over this model the uh, customized scaffold this customized scaffold is designed also with a hole in order to allow the fixation by means of a fixation screw and then it is uh, uh, prototyped we can mill it generally and now we have also the opportunity to 3d print this scaffold in order to save material and this is the surgical cases ended very well by means of this uh, uh, customized scaffold the accuracy of the scaffold is very high and it simplifies the surgery uh, because uh, the process is very fast this is the, the procedure, six months later we have a lot of bone, we can place the implant and this is the control, when the CBCT control after the implant has been placed and uh, then the period of submerged healing and the final restoration. So this is a possibility that we have now for bone regeneration as well and these are the different radiographs at different times uh, with, uh, until the end with the final restoration. We can also design custom-made root analog implants in zirconia or in titanium. We started long ago in 2010 working with this approach, combing computer tomography, virtual extraction of the um, compromised tooth before to surgically extract it, design of the integral abutment, design of the root analog implant, then the root analog implant was 3D printed by means of uh, selected laser melting or selected laser sintering and then there was the surgical uh, operation the careful removal of the compromised tooth and the placement with a little percussion hammer of the root analog uh, one piece implant with an integral abutment here the case uh, by professor figliuzzi we published it in 2012 the virtual extraction of the root, the, the tooth that is compromised and needs to be extracted by means of a careful segmentation. The root is virtually extracted before the surgery. We can add in the Rhinocero software an integral abutment with a platform switching and then we print our implants by means of a direct metal laser sintering machine, the EOS machine, and then we need to place the implant the, in, in the surgical field after the removal, the careful removal of the uh, compromised root and we can immediately place a, a crown and we can avoid uh, occlusal contacts and these are the results three weeks later 
and these are the results one year later we published these results in 2012 but now we have results seven years later and as you can see it is amazing how the stability of the bone is uh, um, it's great after this case even if it is a particular case because it is a particular application but uh, we love this kind of application we love this kind of uh, solutions non-conventional solutions we are working with this solution also with superiostial implants in Italy uh, we have some uh, surgeons on that are who are passionate for this uh, technique and we are going to reinterpret it in a digital way so we combine com being computed tomography with intraoral scan so all the 3D data are put together in a virtual model and then this virtual model with the information of the bone of the gingiva of the teeth residual heat of the soft tissues are put together in order to model it is a little bit more complex uh, an individual implant in this case a superiosteal implant that is custom made customized and then this implant is uh, um, produced exactly as we like with the integral abutment emerging from the structure of the implant only with a few fixation screw and it is then produced as you can see with the metal laser sintering and placed uh, in the case of patients who do not want undergo to bone regeneration techniques because they have already lost um, in, 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 the, in their previous uh, experiences uh, some implants placed in the regenerated bone they are old they want a fast solution and they don't want to undergo complex and long regenerative therapy so it is a possible non-conventional solution for the posterior mandible when the posterior mandible is extremely atrophied as an alternative for example to short implants and it is just an alternative i don't want to comment on it i'm a fan of uh, uh, conventional implants but this is another possibility and it is fully digital we published this uh, technique in 3d printing in medicine a very important springer nato journal and so we conclude our lecture of today with the final application uh, custom made implants for maxillofacial surgery it is a very challenging cases this patient had uh, very aggressive cancer in the mandible this cancer attacked the whole body of the mandible they had to remove the body of the mandible and uh, several attempts had been made in order to restore with conventional technique the function because this patient couldn't eat normally and the, the aesthetics as well because the aesthetic was not good and uh, we decided after failure with the conventional technique to try it digital and we planned together with professor Macchi University of Varese the wall implant the wall mandible the wall artificial mandible because we had only the condites and a very little portion remaining and uh, the, the implant uh, included also four um, abutment integral and it was printed with the technology of the EOSYN 290 so uh, this is the, the final implant as you can see made by direct metal laser sintering a 3D printing technique a very powerful 3D printing technique and this was the surgery performed by professor Grecchi in the University of Milano the surgery on patient maxillofacial surgery and the results is incredibly good after two years because it is extremely stable even if the patient uh, unfortunately had uh, the cancer uh, coming back because it was a very aggressive cancer anyway after two years uh, the, 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 the implant the, the mandible the artificial mandible is still there the aesthetic and most of all the function have been uh, um, uh, stable along these uh, two years the patient is satisfied it was a very difficult case and if we can see from the CBCT taken two years after the surgery the implant is also well integrated into the bone because of the properties of this uh, implant that is porous in its surface and it helps a lot the integration with the bone 
Thank you very much for your uh, kind attention.